Ananda Shangarana, Salakaya Chaksurun Militam Yanatashma is Vigra Venama. Sweet Chetanim Rubistam, Stapitam Yanabutare, Sayam Rupa Karameam Darati, Sapranticum. One day home, Sweet Rubi, see a tap at a common home. Sweet Chetanim Rubistam, Stapitam Yanabutam, Krishna Chetanya Devam, see Radha Krishna Padan, Sahagana Larita Shivishikan Vitam. He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinu Pandu Jigapate Kopisha Gopika Kanta Radhikanta Namos today. Jayatam Sarito Pango Mamma Dear Matergiti Matsavisham Parambo Jarad and Maran Namon. Seaman Rasa Rasa Rambi Vamsi Vare Kirsten Venetian Yukube Gopanatas Riasidam. Tibiad Brindaranya Kapa Drumada Shima Radnagada Shima Shanisto. Shri Sira Shido Govinda Deva Prasad Abhi Seva Manush Marami. Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmanya Taya Chaji Gadi Taya Krishna, Go Vinaya Namo Namah. Mangalang Bhagavan Vishnu, Mangalam Gudhaja Jav, Mangalam Panini Kaksho, Mangalayata. Om Narayanaya Vidmihi Vasudevaya Dimihi Tano Vishnu Pachodiya Tehim. Om Mahadevi Chabidmihi Vishnu Panichi Dimihi Tano Lakshmi Pachodiya Tehim. Mahalakshmi Namastibyam Namastibyam Sare Sare Hari Priya Namastibyam Namastibyam Dhyana Dhyana Tapta Kanchana Gonengi Rade Vindavani Shari Vishavana Sute Devi Pranamani Hari Priya Subham Karoti Kayaram Maragam Dana Satya Buddhi Aram Deepa Jyoti Dana Shara Deepa Jyoti Dana Dana Deepa Jyoti Parapram Deepa Maitra Pajam Deepa Jyoti Manavashtate Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Jevanarotamam Devam Sarasatim Vyasam Dato Jayadira Thanks everyone for joining me, <clears throat> Gene and John on uh, Facebook and others who have not yet come onto the comment section. I'm going to have uh, cataract surgery tomorrow in Salt Lake City on my right eye. So I won't be able to give the class Tuesday and Wednesday, I'll still be recovering. It says don't, don't do any computer work on the day after the surgery. So this will be our only class of the week, fortunately. Um, I had my left eye done about two years ago up at Hoops Vision in Draper. The surgeon was uh, Benjamin Bruckner, excellent surgeon. He'd been to the Sunday feast as, a, as an undergraduate with his wife, very favorable, and um, did such a terrific job with the left eye that we're going to go back and get the right eye done. And the day after the surgery, I was sitting in the office waiting for the doctor to come in and i've been told that after the surgery your eye tends to be blurry for a few days but that was not the case with me i happened to look over at the eye chart and the the smallest letters the lowest line with the tiniest smallest letters jumped out at me it's like they were as big as a house it was miraculous how great a transformation was brought about by that procedure so I'm looking forward to having the same sharp vision return to my right eye as it did to my left eye a couple of years ago. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk uh, not about a specific verse, but generally speaking, um, something that comes to mind in the course of discussing Ambarish and Dervasamuni, and that is the fact that our whole culture, our whole philosophy, our whole international society for Krishna consciousness is based on sound vibration. There's sound, and then there's sound, and then there's sound. The ordinary sounds, full of question and answers. What do I eat? Where do I find it? Where do I sleep? With whom do I mate? What's the best way to defend against attacks? Every morning, 8 million... 400,000 species of life wake up from wherever they've been sleeping, whether it's on a tree branch or in a cave or within the water or in a barn or whether it's in a comfortable heated house with a bed and quilts and covers and a comfortable pillow and central heating. Within a few minutes of their waking up, there's millions and millions of questions being asked along the lines of eating, sleeping, mating, defending. So there's lots and lots of information being traded, being asked for and given 
on any given day in the, in the universe, in the Mahatattva, the place where we live. A ordinary sound vibration is meant to give information, usually in connection with maintaining this material body and mind. Spiritual sound, however, gives transformation. Spiritual sound, unlike ordinary material sound, brings about a change for the better, a positive, uplifting change of consciousness. This is described in the second canto, Tad Bhagvi Shargo Jana Tagavi Plava, Yajmin Prati Soka Namami Ananta, Srinbanti Garanti Prinati Sadavaha. Transcendental literatures, which are, if you think about it, a book is sound vibration. When you're reading a book, you're running the sounds through your head. Even if you're reading silently, you're not really reading silently, but you're hearing the words within your head. So reading is the same thing as hearing. Reading is intaking sound vibration. And so this verse says that even if you have a book which is imperfectly composed, the grammar is not perfect, the binding is not up to the highest standard, such as, for instance, the three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam, which Prabhupada first brought to America, it doesn't matter. The sound vibration within is so potent that it can bring about a revolution in the consciousness of people all over the world. Prabhupada gave the example that if, you're, if your house is burning and someone is coming to warn you, they may not speak English, but they'll get the message across through their body language, their waving, their gestures. <laughs> they'll, they'll communicate to you that you need to get out of the house. There's great danger there. So in the same way, Bhagavatam on one level is communicating to us that we're in a, a burning house, this material world of samsara. Everything is being destroyed by time. As surely as fire consumes, destroys, and causes to disappear everything that it touches, time also, everything that it touches causes that to dis disappear. Kalo Shmin Loka Sayakrit Prabhupada, Krishna says in the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, time I am the destroyer of all worlds, and I've come to engage all people. The reason that time is so insurmountable is that time is God, and God is time. No one can surmount the potency of God. God appears within this material world in his time factor. And those who neglect the prime duty of the human form of life, which is to revive their God consciousness, become consumed by time. They live their lifespan without having achieved any spiritual, any permanent result. They've just maintained their bodies for a few years and then passed on. However, if one is fortunate enough to lend submissive oral reception to the message of the Bhagavatam, even if the words are not grammatically correct, even if the binding and the production is not up to the standard of the New York Times bestseller, nevertheless, those literatures have the potency to bring about a consciousness in the lives of the hearers. And we're practically seeing that. Robert said, when I came to America, I had no money. I was an old man. I had, I had nothing to pay followers. I had no, no bribes to give. And yet, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, which Prabhupada founded in a very humble way, in a park in New York City, sitting down, chanting over the bongo drum, has spread all over the world. And it is an immense force for positive spiritual change, not only in the lives of many, many individuals, but as well as having effect collectively throughout the whole world. It's all based on sound. Some in substance of ISKCON is sound vibration. What is it that's so special about sound? Well, hearing topics about the Lord from such literature as the Srimad Bhagavatam gives us three things. Sudhikarna, Bhutikarna, Riddhikarna. Sudhikarna means purification of heart. Bhutikarna refers to a sharpening of the intellect, a sharpening of the intelligence, an increased focus on what matters. Riddhi means enhancing the sphere of our attraction to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. Now, if you fail to 
take advantage of the positive sound vibrations as transmitted from the great saints and sages. We're doomed to be negatively affected. We're doomed to have our conscience purified, and, I'm sorry, polluted by negative sound vibrations. Positive sound uplifts. Negative sound pushes down. Transcendental sound glorifies and cleanses. Fact is, whether you acknowledge this or not, whether you like it or not, you cannot have happiness with a dirty heart. Everywhere we see people are running around looking for happiness, and yet they neglect to consider that the most crucial element in achieving happiness is to have a clean heart. You cannot be happy, you cannot be peaceful, you cannot be joyful as long as you're burning with envy at another's success. Examples given in the Bhagavatam, wherever there's a honeycomb with slots, the bees run there and the, the bees who arrive first will stick their heads in those little holes and they'll, in the, on the front side, they'll drink the honey, beautiful, sweet tasting honey. But the bees that have arrived later and they see all the holes are taken by the early arrivals, they're so envious that they're stinging the backsides of the bees who on the front are drinking the honey. They're consumed with envy and therefore they're getting the backside. And really, you can't have success in this material world without attracting the envious glances, the envious um arrows of those who um, think that they should be where you are, that you're just lucky, and that it's not fair that they have what you would like to have, that you have, you would like to have what they have. There's a story about a Mr. Josie who was singing and dancing out in the neighborhood, and one of his other neighbors came and said, Mr. Josie, why are you singing and dancing? He said, my other neighbor won the lottery. So then he said, so you're very happy then for your neighbor that he won the lottery. You're cheering him on. You're glad for him. Mr. Josie said, not exactly. He lost his ticket. And when you have that kind of an envious heart, when you have that kind of malice, you're never, ever going to be satisfied. We need a clean heart so we can live a satisfied life. And your consciousness is clean and your words and your actions will be clean as well. It is said, start out by watching your thoughts. Watch your thoughts because your thoughts will turn into words. And then you can watch your words. Your words will turn into actions. And watch your actions, they'll turn into your character. And watch your character, if you do everything right, your character will turn into a great destiny. And everything, dayatovisham pumsham sangat sanjay, everything starts with a thought. So the key to happiness is to have thought management, to have consciousness management. When our own internal wiring, our own internal systems are fixed, that's when we'll achieve peace and satisfaction. And that's when the external problems will start to resolve themselves. Well, Krishna is meant to live in my heart. Um, that's not going to happen if I have a dirty heart. Chaito Darpanam Arjanam Babada Vagni Nirvapanam Sreya Kavaja Vijabada Jivanam Anandam Bodhi Bardanam Pradipanam Purnamrita Shvaranam Sarvat Mashnapanam Param Vijayate Sri Krishna chanting. You know, main process of chanting Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari is to offer Krishna, Supreme Personality of Godhead, a clean place in our heart. How many of you have come to a a bus station or a seat on a train, seen that it's really dirty, a park bench, a couch, and seen it's really dirty. How eager are you to sit down in that dirty place? Isn't it that you'll take a broom, or you'll take your handkerchief, take a vacuum which is available, try to make that place clean before you're going to sit down there. We don't feel comfortable sitting down in a place that's dirty. Similarly, 
We want to make our heart a place where the Lord can come and reside, where he can shine his light, where he can dissipate the darkness of anger and envy so that we can feel the transcendental light of happiness. In the 10th canto, the Bhagavatam Vasudev says to Kamsa, after Kamsa's come to almost to the verge of killing his own sister on her wedding day, Vasudev, Shoka Harsha Baya Dweshti Loka Moha Madan Vitaha Mito Greenit in Rabashiti Babir Bhavan Vitakshita. Vasudev says to Kamsam, persons with a vision of discrimination, they are imbued with material qualities like lamentation, jubilation, fear, envy, grief, illusion, and madness, because they only see the immediate cause. They only identify the immediate cause. They don't consider there is a remote, all-powerful cause who's working out your destiny according to your karma. And there's really nothing you can do about it. The more you rant and rail, the more you try to change your karma, the worse it gets. I remember when we were in Australia one time, we went to this meeting in a place called the Wayside Chapel. Although it purported to be a religious place, a place of religious gathering, it was mostly radicals and revolutionaries, anarchists, even some self-styled Nazis who gathered there. The discussions were lively to say the least. But when one of the uh, black power people from the ghetto there, I forget what the name of what they considered the black area in Sydney was. When he saw the Hare Krishna city in the audience, he got up on stage and he said, if any of the Hare Krishna's coming, Redfern, that's what it was called, coming to Redfern with their turn the other cheek philosophy, he said, I will take my gun and shoot them. So I thought, okay, he's already considers himself one of the oppressed. He always, he already considers himself having been treated unfairly. But now taking that as an excuse, he's gone out of his way, gratuitously to insult and to offend and even to threaten with death, pure hearted devotees of the Lord. That's an instance of taking a bad situation and making it worse. He's, identif he's identifying people like the Hare Krishnas as the cause of his suffering. The last place he's gonna look is in his own actions, in his own past history. The fact is what rules this material world is the law of cause and effect. If you're experiencing unwanted outcomes, it's because you planted the wrong kinds of seeds. You can't plant a cactus seed and get a mango. You have to plant the right kind of seeds. Those seeds are love, respect, consideration, and purity. Other than that, otherwise one takes birth amongst those who are envious and mischievous. And by the, by the flame of envy, by the burning flame of envy, one situation gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Being bewildered and obsessed with immediate causes when lashes out here and lashes out there, lashes out here, tries to get even here and get revenge there. The whole life is wasted dealing with the immediate cause when in fact the remote cause is the decisions that you made in the past and the arrangements of karmic reactions by the laws of material nature. We have no one to hold responsible for our present conditions except ourselves. And as soon as we point the finger, as soon as we blame others, we make the situation even worse. We dig ourselves a deeper hole than that in which we're already stuck. This is what Lord Shiva, says along these lines in the fourth canto to Parvati. Parvati wants to go to a sacrifice that's being performed by her father, Daksha. But Daksha is envious. He's an envious personality. He didn't agree that his daughter would marry Lord Shiva. 
he couldn't see Lord Shiva for the great personality that he is. He only saw that Lord Shiva smears his body with ashes. Lord Shiva doesn't have a proper place to live. How can my daughter go and live in a cave somewhere? My high-born, educated, beautiful daughter, how can she go and live in a cave somewhere with this dirty, ascetic Shiva? He had an envious attitude towards the renunciation, towards the beautiful lotus-like consciousness of Lord Shiva. Daksha had lots of things. He was surrounded by lots of things. But the very fact that he was fixated on things obscured his vision as far as the great souls are concerned. The Lord Shiva spoke to Parvati, uh, warning her that it would not probably turn out very well if she went to her father's sacrifice. Those who are envious, those who are conducted by false ego. They're never peaceful. They're always upset. They're always stressed mentally, sensually. They cannot tolerate seeing anybody more successful than them. Anybody in a bigger house, anybody in a better car, anybody more happy than them, more full of joy than them, because they themselves are unable to do what it takes to rise to a higher standard of purity. Their response is only to drag people down into the basement, so to speak, with them. There are balcony people and basement people. Balcony people understand there's an unlimitedly loving, potent, supreme personality of God out there. And if we get ourselves right with his plan for the Lord, he's poised to open the windows of heaven and shower us with abundance. And then there are those who see the devotees of the Lord being successful in all their activities, getting the right breaks, having the right connections, being blessed with abundance from the Lord. And they become envious. That should be me. It's not fair. I work harder than them. I'm more qualified than them. So they, they spend their whole time, instead of worshiping the Supreme Personality of God, instead of following the path that those of whom they're envious follow in order to get where they are, they simply scheme and conspire, backstab. So it says, being unable to rise to the standard of purification and self-realization that truly happy people have attained, the envious person is always burning in a fire, never satisfied. Later on, after Shiva projections came true, Parvati, against the advice of her husband, went to the sacrifice. As Shiva had prophesied, Daksha insulted her. She felt so ashamed of the body she'd received from her father that she sat down and immolated herself. She consumed that body in fire. Lord Shiva came to the assembly and he wreaked havoc amongst the offenders, the followers of Daksha. Then in an appeal to get Lord Shiva to cease and desist, Lord Brahma appeared on the scene. And what Lord Brahma had to say about Daksha and his followers, even though Lord Brahma wanted to save them from further destruction, nevertheless, uh, he was basically saying to Lord Shiva, they're not worth it. They're not worth your time and trouble. Envious people have nothing to redeem them. Lord Brahma says, persons like this, again, you get the term differentiation. They see everything differentiated. This is, this is the cause, and she's the cause, and he's the cause, and the government's the cause, and the corporations are the cause. When in fact, Everything comes from one cause, and that is Krishna. Everything originates from Krishna, and ultimately everything uh, falls into place according to Krishna's arrangement. 
according to the laws which Krishna has put into place. Failing, missing that remote cause, people who observe everything with differentiation and who are constantly, consequently attracted to the items, the commodities, the products, the byproducts of this material world. And as a result, become mean-minded because they never have enough. They're never satisfied by things. They're always pained to see the flourishing condition of others and give distress to those other people by uttering harsh and piercing words. Lord Brahma says to Lord Shiva, they're not worth the trouble. Don't bother to go on killing them. Why? Because they're already killed by providence. There's no need for you to kill them again because they're already, what's the term? Dead men walking. They've missed the most important fact of life, which is that happiness is not achieved by your own efforts. Happiness is achieved by resting, reposing, abiding in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Maya Shikta Manapartav Yogamil, Asam Sam Samagam Yata Jiknashi Tachnu. Who are going to be happy? Krishna says, those are going to be happy who abide, who have taken shelter in my lotus feet. Those and those only will know me without doubt. And having achieved the summum bone of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is never envious of others. So, Che Tato Mahamunita Magna Chitta, Lord Maharaj said, to Lord Nishringadev, why would I why would I want anything? Why would I feel myself lacking in any area? Because all I have to do is just open my mouth and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. And I can submerge myself in an ocean of ecstasy. Just look out in the fields and look at the cows. All they need is grass, just green, fresh grasses. They don't have to work. They don't have to go on a commute on the freeway. They don't have to buy a car, licensing, insurance. They don't have to have a, um, a supermarket nearby. They travel in their car, with a shopping cart. Life is so simple. Just give me some fresh green grass. It's all I need. I don't need to go anywhere. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to have an MA, a PhD, or a any letters after my name, God has amply and abundantly provided for the uh, maintenance of all his living beings. Nitya, nityanam, chetanas, chetana. But why do we have to go through all this huge effort in order to eat special food, in order to travel in a motor car instead of by uh, foot, foot express? Why do we have to fly? Why do we have to go under the air? Why do we have to go 60, 70 miles an hour? Henry Ford once said that if they ever made a car that went over 40 miles an hour, the people driving that car would go mad. Why couldn't the valuable energy which comes to us in the human form of life be used specifically and focusedly for purity? Why couldn't we just try for a pure heart? Because happiness comes from a pure heart. In other areas, we're interested in purity. How much money do we spend on water purifiers every year? How many billions and billions of dollars do we spend on organic, pure food? How much do we spend on air filters? We're concerned with purity in our food. We're concerned with purity in our water. We're concerned with purity in our air. And yet, where's the interest in purity of heart? That's the only purity that's going to make you happy. It's all totally overlooked. Our question today is who wants a new clean heart filled with pure thoughts and right desires? Because gaining such one experiences happiness. Not only that, but in that happy state, one sees God face to face. Yam yabda la peram yada manyatam yajman stiku du kere guru napi vichalyate. You know, we try for a home. Then we have to have a security system. Then we have guards that drive by. We have to have a big bank balance so we can make sure we pay the, pay the mortgage when it comes to all of these various arrangements for security and for protection. And yet, 
all one really needs to do is to have a nice, clean sitting place where the Lord can reside within your heart. Because for such a person, he thinks the person on whose lotus heart the Lord is sitting and with whom he's communicating, that person knows that they have achieved the highest goal which it is possible to achieve. Yam labdav chaparam labdav. Manyake narikam chara. Gurunapi vichalyate. Gurunapi means the worst setback, the worst loss, the worst disappointment, the worst defeat. Someone who's situated in Krishna conscious, who has a pure heart, is not disturbed even in the midst of the greatest challenge, the worst defeat, and the biggest loss. They still think, I am the most fortunate, happy person. What has befallen me is simply the result of my bad activities. But the Lord has taken what would have been a much greater reaction, and he's minimized it. Prabhupada, in a book called uh, The Science of Self-Realization, was speaking with uh, upper-level man management in the police department in Chicago. Prabhupada suggested to him that Rather than enacting more and more laws and hiring more and more law enforcement personnel, money and energy would be much more effectively spent achieving trying for purity of heart. Basic difference between a criminal and a pious citizen is the state of their heart. The criminal's heart is dirty. He thinks he's going to be happy by material things. That definition fits not just people who are in jail, but a lot of people who are considered sex successful in the material estimation. Their hearts are dirty because they don't see the way to purity. The dirt which is in their heart is like a disease which takes the form of uncontrollable lust, greed, and envy. So people in general, not only those who are incarcerated, but those also who are supposedly successful citizens have this diseased heart condition in common. That's why you have blue collar crime, but white collar crime is just as, if not more widespread than blue collar crime. So whoever they are, they're suffering from an impure heart, a diseased condition. The answer to reducing crime is to address the, the disease condition of the hearts. If some or other we can purify the hearts, provide a process whereby people's hearts will be cleansed of lust and anger and envy, then your criminal problems will be solved. The best way we can do that is by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I remember one year, I was living in Los Angeles for 10 years. Every August, second Sunday in August, the temple there organizes a beautiful festival at Venice Beach. It starts in Santa Monica at the Civic Center. There are three big carts, three or four stories high carts. Ojagana, Subhadra, and Balaram, three Krishna deities. They go along the bicycle, bicycle path right along the beach. They go through downtown Santa Monica, and then they get the bicycle path. It's about three miles, and they end up at the Venice Beach Pavilion. It's a four-acre grassy area. People come from all over the world to visit the Venice Pavilion. There are all kinds of trendy shops. There are street artists. One Sunday a year, the Hare Krishnas take over. The population on Venice Beach is already, on an August day, could easily be 20, 30, 40,000 people. And yet, on the day of the Hare Krishna festival, it's twice that probably the dense, most densely populated day of the year. One year, they've had it for over 50 years now. One year, this was probably in the 80s, uh, there was an environmental group that uh, thought that the damage to the grass was too great on that particular day. And they wanted, when we went to apply for the permit, they petitioned that the permit be denied because of the uh, use on the grass there. The grass was traumatized by all the people. 
And surprisingly enough, the two entities that came to our defense were the merchants, not so difficult to understand because the merchants had one of their best selling days, one of their best retail days of the year on that day. But what was more surprising was the police association came to the defense of the devotees. They wanted the permit to be granted. And their reasoning was that even though the population on Venice Beach on that particular Sunday is twice what it'd be normally, the crime is a fraction. With everybody either chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, or listening to the chant or taking prasadam, there, there is less crime. Although there are more people, there's less crime. So the police opposed the petition of the environmentalists to stop the approval of the permit. And the devotees offered, and I think every year they give a couple thousand dollars for the reseeding of the grass as well. That was a condition under which the permit continued to be approved. But what do we learn from this? That happiness is a condition of the heart. It's not what comes to you from the outside in. It's what comes from the inside out. Teshav evanu kampartam ahamanam nisyami argyanam deepanam bashuna. Krishna is within the heart. That you, you just have to give him a clean place to sit within your heart. You can't put him off by having dirty things in your heart. Purity is the personal decision to glorify God with your heart in which resides your soul, with your mind, with your body, and with your words. <clears throat> A God-conscious person, a person who has a plan for achieving purity of heart and happiness, asks this question about every area of his activities, bodily, mentally, physically, spiritually, and intellectually. Is it going to honor God? Is my reading this book going to purify my heart, or is it going to pollute my heart? Is seeing this movie going to pollute my heart or is it going to purify my heart? Especially are hanging around with these friends going to challenge me to become a better version of myself or are they just making compromises? Are they guilty of sloppy living? And if that's the case, then will I not be negatively affected by spending time around them? Asat Sangha Tyage Vaishnava Charashtri Sangha Krishna Bhaktara. The first duty of someone who wants to achieve purity of heart is look at those with whom you surround yourself. Look at where they're going. Look at what their priorities are, their ethics, their level of integrity. And if it's not, if they're not where you'd like to be, if if they're not going where you'd like to go, then the first thing you need to do is put some distance between yourself and them. You can still love them, but you will do it from a distance. Because your goal is not to dissemble, not to be a pretender, not to be uh, of two minds, not to have a divided consciousness, but your goal is to be transparent. Your goal is to be pure through and through. Not to be of two minds, you want to be You want to be one-minded. You want to be single-pointed, focused on the Supreme Personality of Godhead's lotus feet as param gatam, the ultimate goal of the form of human life. This is what Kunti says in the Bhagavatam. Let my, let, my conscious, let my consciousness be free of lust, envy, greed. Let my matir be madu. Let my consciousness be sweet. Just like the Ganges, by its powerful force of its flow, 
takes your corpses, your garbage, your chemical effluvia, and purifies it. It takes that which is impure, and in the course of its flow to the river, it removes all those impurities. And similarly, akama, sarva karma, moksha karinda, tivrena, yajitam purushanam. Let the flow of Krishna consciousness in terms of our speaking, in terms of our eating, what we read, what we look at in the movies, with whom we associate with each other, what we eat, let, let all of that flow towards Krishna. Let all of my decisions be towards Krishna, go on the Krishna side, because in that flow, just like the flow of the Ganges, there are many impure things that might have been deposited in the Ganges, but the flow of the Ganges, the force of the Ganges, and the size of the Ganges is such that it's always pure, no matter what you put into it. Because similarly, like Kunti, we pray, let my flow, my body, my words, my mind be towards Krishna. She says also, Although family, of course, is very important, Krishna sends certain people into our lives, and we need to be a light, we need to be an example to them, we need to demonstrate and represent the purity and unconditional love of the spiritual world. Nevertheless, families are not permanent. Family members come together due to their past karma. They circulate for some time and then they're dispersed again. We can't stay with the family members. Only insofar as we're Krishna conscious can we then go back to home, back to God, and to be rejoin that one great family of the children of God. Otherwise, sometimes in a, in a river, there will sticks and various uh, branches and all, they'll all come together. And then maybe they'll clump up for a while and travel together down the river. But eventually, the force of the current will again cause them to break up. Some parts of it will get caught and be left behind on the branch. Some parts of it will be um, uh, broken up by rapids or white water. So the various elements come together for some time and, the, and they come from various directions, various sources. They come together and then they're dispersed in due course of time. So from our past karma, we find ourselves in a certain family of a certain gender, a certain nationality, ethnicity. We remain there for some time and then we're dispersed. We all go in different directions. Another example is travelers may come to a crossroads. You'll notice most of the convenience stores, most of the gas stations, they're on corners, they're on intersections where there's a lot of traffic coming from all directions. Travelers might come from east and north and south and west, and they might go into a convenience store and get themselves a cold drink. They might get themselves a tank full of gas, and they might exchange a few words. Uh, make a brief passing friendships, you know, acquaintances. However, as soon as that short little interlude is over, they get back in their cars and they go off in different directions. They came from different directions. They gathered for some time and then they go off in different directions. Similarly, Kunti prays, Atavi Shvesha Vitmatma. You know, in this birth, I took birth in the, in the Vrishni dynasty and then I went to the Karava dynasty. Um, what I'll be in my next birth. I don't know what dynasty, I don't know what family, I'll be in my next birth. But Krishna, you are the Vishwatmam, Vishwatmam. You are the soul of the universe. You are really the only one with whom I have a permanent family relational connection. And so I pray that I not get distracted by these temporary material family situations. They're not who I am. They're not permanent. We have to act in the best way that we can with the people that God sends into our lives, but we should not prioritize family over God consciousness. Our main duty in life is to be true to Krishna, just like the duty of a wife is to be chaste and faithful to her husband. That duty trumps all other duties. And so one has to be Krishna conscious. One has to give a suitable place for sitting, a cleansed place for sitting, to the Lord who created me and who also created all of my loved ones, my friends, my kinsmen, my associates. Let 
nothing deviate my attention from my duty to the supreme personality of god this is a person of cleansed heart this is a person of integrity what does integrity mean it means they're the same outside as inside person of integrity doesn't say one thing and act in a different way their motives are true krishna is very concerned with the inner picture that we reveal He's not so foolish and naive as to fall for how we present ourselves on Facebook or Instagram. After all, he's in the heart. He's privy to our deepest, darkest secrets. And he knows that it's in our interest to root those out. It's in our interest to get those off of our chest, to unburden ourselves. Things, dirty things, diseased things, impure things they thrive in the dark but as soon as they are brought to the light they cannot thrive anymore so krishna from within the heart wants us to be honest and open and straightforward and can and and at least find somebody with whom we can share our deepest fears our deepest secrets our greatest anxieties so we can become pure and transparent may not be perfect may still have shortcomings but we are what we appear to be what you see is what you get such a person who is pure in heart is never attracted by the material energy material energy prompts the individual to try and dominate material energy presents itself in this uh, in this uh, uh <clears throat> way in such a way it invites you to use it to harness it uh, to exploit it and yet in the course of making that effort in the course of trying to exploit to harness to own material energy it ends up owning you it's like tar baby tar baby the pure devotee is astute enough it's sharp enough experienced enough through the words of the scripture and through one's previous lives never to get sucked into the process of trying to exploit, control, and dominate over material nature. Again, like Prahlad, Mahamrita Magna Chitta, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. The devotee doesn't need to go externally to find out who they are to achieve happiness. The devotee knows everything is right here at hand. There's no need for the turning externally to the things of this world in order to pursue happiness everything krishna has equipped us with from the very beginning nitya siddha krishna prema sadhu kavanai shravana jyoti kari on him prabhupada said you know i'm an old man i have no money i have nothing to bribe these young people with and yet they are willing to give up their lives for me they are dedicated to the mission of krishna consciousness they've forsaken turn their backs and forsworn all the impurities of LSD, intoxication, meeting, illicit sex, and gambling. Why? Because Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, love of God, is already there. It, does, it doesn't need to be given. It's already there within the heart. Simply, we revive it by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you, one and all, for being with us this Monday morning. I may be able to give a class tomorrow. I may not be able to give a class. I don't know. I'm having eye surgery. Uh, they haven't established the time that I have to be up in Salt Lake for the surgery. They're going to call me today. But if it's uh, morning, which I suspect it might be, then I'll be on the road at this time going up there um, for the prep and so on and so forth. And then the once you have the surgery, they say for a day or so, don't don't do computer work. So that's probably probably we won't have the class tomorrow, the following day. We'll pick up on this subject matter next Monday when I have a new vision, when I clear out the impurities from within my right eye in the form of cataracts, I will automatically see clearly. I'm not note note the similarity. I'm not getting a new eye, not getting the eye replaced. Everything I need to see nicely is there, but it's obscured 
by the cataract. So just getting the cataract removed and the vision is already there. So I'm just reviving it. It's a... We can all see God. We can all see God. We already have that capacity. God has gifted us with the capacity to see him. But we have to do one thing, and that is to remove the cataracts and anoint the eyes with the salve of love, and then we can see purely. Thank you for joining us, Jean and John Malik, Manisaganga, Brent Shukshma is in Tucson after having attended the Shivaratri celebration last night. She further says, who could ever imagine that a humble bongo drum and some small cartels would start a worldwide organization that is still flourishing and expanding today? Who could imagine indeed? That's the first thing that the first devotee I met told me. Love of God is already there within your heart. You don't have to search for it. You just have to purify. You just have to purify. That's our topic today, Sudhi Karan. The effect of hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam is that the heart becomes purified. Another effect is Riti Karan, and another effect is Bhuti Karan. We'll talk more about those next week. The intelligence is purified and focused through Bhuti Karan and then Riti Karan. Your relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead manifests itself. Manasaganga says in his Gajendra Lila Kata sessions, Amarendra Prabhu, let us understand that Gajendra was able to remember the prayers he knew from a previous life because Gajendra did not blame anyone else for his dangerous situation. He didn't get distracted. He didn't get baffled by the current situation at hand. He started off by not blaming the crocodile which left his mind free then to recollect the prayers that he'd offered as a king in his previous life. That's the key. Not to jump to blaming others for your current situation. And when you're cool and calm, chill like that, then the, rem the remembrance of who you are lifetime after lifetime after lifetime is an eternal spark, spiritual part of Krishna is evoked. That's the key. That's the secret. To not react, but to be so full of Krishna consciousness that you see everything that happens to you as being Krishna's program, Krishna's plan to purify you to mature you, to qualify you for going back home, back to God. Vai says, can you drive after surgery? You're not supposed to. That's why I usually spend the night nearby in Salt Lake City. They want you to come back the following day for a follow-up checkup, so I don't go far. Rob, what, what, would you, what can you share with us? We always, is, are you still there? Hmm. He came in a little late, and I clicked to let him in, but then he might have lost his contact afterwards. He's not there now. He wasn't there when we began, but he sent me a message, and then I clicked to let him in, but then, but he's not there now. So we'll have to not have Rob's takeaways today. That's it. Have a great day. Chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari. And when next I appear before the screen, I'll be able to see it twice as good as I can now. Hari Bhav.